Hello, this is Crispin Flintoff from Not The Andrew Marr Show. Before this video starts, I'd just like to ask if you'd subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, because we will be covering the general election um, from a totally different perspective from what you get from the mainstream media. We'll be talking about the candidates who are taking on Labour and the Tories and pushing them all the way. So please subscribe and get updates. Um, I'm really pleased to be joined on Not the Andrew Marr Show by Jody Jones, a journalist who uh, wrote to me a couple of weeks ago about something I was not aware of at all, which is uh, GoFundMe's role in supporting Israel effectively against Palestine and supporting the genocide. Uh, uh, how are you doing, Jody? I'm all right, thanks. Well, yeah, as well as can be, I suppose. Um, yeah, exactly. Now, uh, just to so people know, because GoFundMe has been a platform that I've used quite a few times before um, for political purposes, uh, when Corbyn was uh, standing to be a uh, leader or when Corbyn was leader, we used GoFundMe. They didn't seem to have a problem with that. I've also used GoFundMe to help people who are desperately in need of money who can't pay the rent. Um mm -hmm. They obviously take some money out of it themselves, uh, but they haven't been too difficult. Uh, what is the experience of people who are trying to use GoFundMe to support people in Gaza, for example, or Palestine in general? The, the, experiences, that, uh, the experiences that I've heard of and that I've experienced also myself in assisting somebody with a GoFundMe um, have ranged from uh, basically... Uh, problems with the main problem has been withdrawing the money which entails a very lengthy um, interrogation process is the only way I can really put it it's racist and discriminatory and clearly loaded with um, accusatory kind of language um, or accusatory tone let's say um, for life-saving money that people should be able to access which have had there's been no issue raising the money you know, to the tune of tens of thousands. But as soon as the money is requested, suddenly GoFundMe has asked many intrusive questions, which are also breaching people's privacy and security, including uh, the full names of every single recipient of the money, um, the location and their passport or identity documents, like uh, information. Now, this stuff is incredibly sensitive information sometimes. I mean, even for me or you, let alone somebody who is currently in a, a, an enclosed open air prison being bombarded 24 hours, seven days a week, uh, amounting to, to genocide under the, under the bombs of a, a fascist uh, state, which has no secret um, in sharing its, its um, surveillance, the, the heightened surveillance of this state is, in, is undeni undeniable as well. So uh, people are extremely um, endangered by these questions that GoFundMe ask. And it's not only these, uh, the, the, the risk of danger that is increased. Anyway, they're already in Gaza under bombardment, facing starvation. Uh, but the next level of the questioning uh, reveals not just their, their poor ethics, but the fact that they have no grasp on the situation as a company, uh, but also that it's like um, it's a replication of white supremacist tendencies, in, in, in my opinion, to try to ask people to give a complete black and white transparency about the expenditure of money in order to flee a genocide. When the levels of corruption and the intersections of corruption that are at play here um, cannot you cannot answer these questions, actually. Uh, you cannot answer where exactly will every money, every penny be spent to ensure the safe evacuation of your family from Palestine. Why is this the question of the Palestinian person? Why should they answer this question? Can I just come in? I mean, that the, the Ukraine is the, is the example again uh, that, to, to compare this with. Um, with yeah. Ukraine, um, I go fund me. We're not asking the kind of questions uh, there. So if someone wanted to raise money for Ukraine, they could kind of just withdraw the money almost as soon as it had, had reached the target or whatever it is that they do with GoFundMe. Is, is, that, mm. is, that, is that really the crux of this, the comparison with Ukraine? Now, the product itself of GoFundMe, the chief product and technology officer is a, a, an Israeli Zionist called Arnie Katz, who studied in Israel and who served in the occupation army. Now, 
When you have someone like this building a product, of course, their inherent bias goes into the coding. When I ask the chatbot, I would like to ask a question about a donation I made to a Palestinian family in Gaza who are trying to survive genocide. The immediate response from this chatbot was, we do not understand this question. Would you like to donate to Ukraine? Now, this is exactly like the problem, you know, like it's, it's societal, it's in the minds of people, it's the bias, it's the prejudice, and it seeps into the technology too. So these things automatically get blocked also um, down to the names and certain phrases that might be even in the text description of a fundraiser. Um, yeah. So if it's Ukraine, it's one thing. If it's Palestine, it's another. Um, also, you know, one I, I was looking at the one forum discussing this topic and I saw, you know, some one user had commented that, you know, in Ukraine, there were many um, militias uh, um, fighting there also who fall under kind of, let's say, uh, terrorist organizations. And there was no problem taking any money uh, for people trying to leave Ukraine or support Ukraine or anything like this. Um, now I'm talking with many different people about their experiences with GoFundMe. And, it, and I find that, yes, they have done many fundraisers before for different situations, for different topics. But now that the situation is regarding Palestine, there's an immediate block on funds, there's interrogation processes, there's lengthy waits. Um, and this is all while, of course, people are literally dying every yeah. second. Now, look, I mean, I, I, I think that this means that we, we can't possibly use GoFundMe to, to raise funds for uh, Gaza. But would you also suggest that people don't use GoFundMe for any other fundraiser? Yes. Because um, in, in, I suppose, using it, you're endorsing their behavior uh, on, on, on Gaza as well, aren't you? Yes, of course. I mean, I'm actively calling for like mass boycott if possible on Go for GoFundMe because not only this situation, but they have in their ranks as an employed person, a Zionist. So anyway, if you're upholding al Bet, which are the principles of the Palestinian cause, you're not going to do business with a Zionist and you're not going to be doing business with people who are literally profiting from genocide because of course also GoFundMe like the other fundraisers platforms also do, they take a percentage, um, of course. Uh, GoFundMe is one of the highest percentages also that is taken from and fees and so on. Um, so yes, I would advocate a complete boycott of the platform. I would advocate trying to shut it down and so that it doesn't continue anymore. As much as this sort of platform does provide digital mutual aid opportunities for people, um, we cannot, the more that we continue using these structures and these systems, the more we validate them, enable them and secure their, their ongoing existence. And this is some, these are parts of society that we have to actively dismantle at some point or another. We cannot keep relying on these because these are actively causing harm. I mean, th th there was talk of a different platform to use, which was mm -hmm. um, go, go get funding. Um, yes. It, but uh, you're not certain that that's, the way forward um yes there's go get funding which i had originally thought was a viable alternative however on speaking with one comrade last night they told me that they had also just set, set up a new go fund uh sorry they told me they had just set up a new go get funding campaign um and this time for palestine which they hadn't say, say made one for palestine before with go get funding mm. and They've had the inevitable issues with having to be uh, having to be interrogated about the use of the money. Um, on the converts, I did also have. I mean, the reason that I first used Go Get Funding myself is that another comrade of mine started to use it also for fundraisers in Gaza, and they were not having any issues. Uh, now, perhaps what's happened is an influx in an influx in use of Go Get Funding um, as an alternative to GoFundMe, perhaps. And they are seeing also that they are going to have to start putting more stringent um, security measures, they call them, uh, in place to ensure this money is, I don't know what they think, but to ensure this money is actually saving lives. Um, meanwhile, of course, their attitude and their slow processes are literally enabling genocide and supporting genocide. Um, in terms of al other alternatives, now there is a movement um, platform called Firefund. I have not used it personally. I've heard that there are, it's a long process to take, to wait for the money. I heard some people had to wait up to two months to 
withdraw the money properly uh, or in full. Um, these were not um, fundraisers for Palestine. These were movement fundraisers um, for people who are maybe, you know, taking actions and so on or feeling or being persecuted by the cops for taking action or whatever, needing to survive, needing to pay their rent and so on. It's called Fire Fund. And honestly, I have not used it, but it is um, another alternative uh, grassroots platform. So this is obviously why there can be some like more difficulty in getting the money or not difficulty, but some longer wait times because of the system. It's not GoFundMe. Mm. But at the same time, if you're going to wait two months for GoFundMe to racistly interrogate you and put your family in jeopardy and take all your personal information and make a percentage of your money versus waiting two months for a grassroots movement um, created initiative that's also an alternative fundraising platform, uh, I would obviously choose this one. Um, yeah. So yes, I, while I am, I'm hesitant to like fully endorse it because I have not used it. It's been positioned to me uh, by various comrades and friends as an alternative that is grassroots, that is not uh, corporate, let's say, which kind of carries more essence of, of the traditional um, uh, ethos of mutual aid. And in a way, we, we, we need to learn um, as people in the West what, who, are, who the allies are of, of people in Gaza and Palestine. And, and, and that's every time we come across an obstacle like GoFundMe, we have to make it known to everyone that they should Absolutely. be boycotting them. So it's... It's it's a matter of every day uncovering who the supporters of Zionism are, and exactly. then um, and then finding alternatives as we go. It's it's a kind of unpicking uh, exercise, isn't it? Of course, and and while it's continuing, and even after, you know, um, we will we will not forgive and we will not forget anybody who has enabled this situation, who has actively not just enabled it, but benefited and and profited from this situation. Um, so of course, at every time we must call out all of the all of the people who are enabling this, and especially Zionist platforms who are making money. I mean, it's sickening. Um, so if this hasn't radicalized people, and I'm severely worried, but the ones that it has radicalized, let us not go back. Let us not sit down. Let us not be quiet. Let us keep going forward. In the UK, if you want better better way to to act now join Palestine action. I mean, they are shutting down Elbit Systems factories across the UK. They are making tangible financial damage to the Israeli war machine. Uh, they are preventing people from doing their jobs, from business as usual. And we need more of this. We need more of this everywhere. But I know, because I have taken action with Palestine action, uh, that they are, in the UK, one of the most immediate and um, tangible kind of structures to attach yourself to if you're looking to actually do something about this, um, to take power into you, or not take power into your own hands, to reclaim the power that we all have as individuals and to invest it collectively for others. Like this is the basics of solidarity. So let's make sacrifices now, let's take action now, and let's uh, act with urgency. You know, these are families, children, uh, people with chronic illnesses, starving and being bombed. Uh, and being snipered to death just for trying to live. I mean, I, I don't know what more really, like I said before, people need to see or understand about this situation before they actually stand up and say, well, now, but let's, uh, let's move forward uh, with more action, I would say.